Hi, uh, good to see you again. Uh, let's spend some minutes to talk about the concept of uh, logic. I hope that most of you have read the uh, materials beforehand or already got some understanding elsewhere. In this presentation, I would like to remind you about the basic concept of uh, logic, including things like uh, propositions or statements, implications, logical equivalence, and sufficient as well as necessary conditions. And then, we will see how logical reasoning works to get some mathematical proofs. In this regards, we're going to apply direct and indirect proof, and also proof by contradiction and by induction. And the last section, I will only emphasize the importance of math in understanding economics and business in particular. Okay, so what do we know about uh, logic? Our life and math subject in particular is full of logic. Why do you think zero cannot be one? Why people couldn't attend and watch a football match during the pandemic? Why only female who could deliver a baby? Why the theory is wrong? Why the argument is illegitimate or not valid? Well, to come up with conclusions such as zero is not one, or only female who could deliver a baby, we need a valid reason, don't we? Valid reasons or valid argument may only come from a correct logic correct thinking. Logic is one way to validate our argument, to prove that our claim or our conclusion is right. The foundation of our logic is propositions or statements, assertions that are either true or false, but not both unless we have open operations. Look at the examples. Here, we have true propositions. The assertions are true based on fact or proven evidence or proven reasoning. On the other hand, we have the following propositions which are all false. 10 is of course not an odd number. Rupiah has never been stronger than US dollar. And the last statement is not an equation because the left side expression 1 plus 5 is not equal to the right one, 3 times 4. How about the last proposition here? Is 10 really a perfect score? Is Liverpool really the biggest club in English football? Well, we need specific definition and standard to justify the assertions. At the moment, we could not say either one is true or false. How about these equations? It's similar. It happens to be true if x is equal to 3 or x is equal to minus 3, but not otherwise. So, Whenever the assertions need a particular definition, value, or another proposition to become true or false, the assertions are still open or we have the so-called open propositions. One last thing that I need to emphasize is, true or false propositions have nothing to do with good or bad, or norms in general. Look at the last example. Is it true or false? Well, it could be true or false regardless of the fact that lying is not a good thing to do, right? In math, we often use letters such as P and Q to denote propositions. Here are examples of P propositions. P is uh, actually true, or supposed to be true in the first statement, and P's are open propositions in the last two statements. Then we have another one, Q propositions, which have similar explanations to P. Now, we're going to talk about two logical reasonings, namely implications and equivalence. Implication is a condition in which P and Q are two propositions such that whenever P is true, then Q is necessarily true. It is symbolized like this, P, implication, arrow, and Q. This is read as P implies Q, or if P, then Q. Okay, now I add if and then in our series of propositions before to show the implication statement. The implication statement P implies Q is defined to be true if P and Q are both true or P is false. Look at the first row. Suppose both P and Q are true. Then P implies Q here is true, meaning that if I work harder, then I get more money. P implies Q is also defined to be true if P is false, no matter Q is true or false. So here we go. We have two possible statements for the false P. If I don't work harder, then I get more money. And if I don't work harder, then I don't get more money. Both statements are true. Since working harder is not the requirement to get more money, 
When I don't work harder, I may get or may not get more money. As for the last statement here, it must be wrong. Remember, we've already accepted at the beginning that if I work harder, I must get more money. We cannot have two contradictive consequences at the same time. Get it? Now, with the correct implications of P to Q, we can also say that P implies Q means P is a sufficient condition for Q or Q is a necessarily a necessary condition for P. Let's check now how to understand both sufficient and necessary condition in our example. I recaptured the example before or left here. Please focus on the true statements only. With P as a sufficient condition, it means that by satisfying P, then Q must be satisfied. Or, if I work harder, then I must get more money. But if P condition is not satisfied, Q condition may still be satisfied. So, if I don't work harder, I may still have a chance to get more money. How about the necessary condition? Necessary condition is just like a screening out. If you apply for a job but you don't qualify, certainly you won't be accepted. If you indeed qualify for a job, does it mean that you must be accepted? The answer is no. It would be up to the employer to accept you or not as his or her employee. So here, Q as a necessary condition means the same. When Q is not satisfied, P must not be satisfied either. But when Q is satisfied, P may or may, or may not be satisfied. Similar to the previous example, we now have the implications in mathematical context. P is x equals 3 and Q is x squared minus 4 equals 5. The first indication for correct implication is if P is true, then Q is true. Clearly here, if x equals 3, then x squared minus 4 must be 5. The second indication is with false P, Q may still be true. Look at the second statement. Even if x is not 3, x squared minus 4 may still be equal to 5. We know if x equals minus 3, it gives us x squared minus 4 equals 5. So as you may observe, this correct mathematical implications of P to Q also an indication for P as a sufficient condition for Q. If P is a sufficient condition for Q, then Q must be a necessary condition for P. Let's check it here. If Q is not satisfied, then P must not, set, must not be satisfied either. If X squared minus 4 is not 5, then X must be not 3. On the other hand, satisfying Q does not necessarily mean satisfying P. When X squared minus 4 is 5, X can be 3, but it can also be minus 3. Our last case is the logical equivalence. It is symbolized with uh, equivalence arrow. We read it as P is equivalent to Q or P if and only if Q. We can only have this equivalent P and Q if both P and Q are true or both are false. In other words, P is a necessary and sufficient condition for Q and vice versa. How can we evaluate that P and Q are sufficient condition for each other? We can easily observe from this condition again. The left side conditions clearly indicate which uh, indicate why both P and Q are sufficient condition for each other. We get certain conclusion when P or Q is satisfied. If X minus 4 is 5, then X must be 9. If X is uh, 9, then X minus 4 must be 5. P and Q also serve as a necessary condition for each other too as there's certain conclusion when P or Q is not satisfied. If X minus 4 is not 5, then X must be not 9. If X is not 9, then X minus 4 must be not 5. These slides just give you the three examples that we have discussed. We have two examples of implications and one example of equivalence. Next, we will be discussing the use of logical implications and or equivalence to get mathematical proofs.